Favor. You think you have price. a higher gear? Is that what you're saying? You get these little streaks Yeah, I mean, I get a just... higher gear. I feel like I can get a higher gear. I mean, yeah. it happened before. Um, it's just that when you play a race 25 or a race 21 or whatever, you're giving the opponent a chance. It's, and it's like, I know it's a shorter race, like a race to three versus a race to ten. I mean, if you want to I mean, look at it, that's a little okay. oversimplification. I mean, I, I think a race to 100 is just, it's like the best format you can ever play, if, especially if you play something like the World Championship. Yeah. See, I feel it fits your style. I really do. And I remember, I don't remember if it was before Alex or Bustamani or Efren. We were talking and you said how you were getting ready for the game and somebody asked you a question, but the answer was, You'd run 17 racks of 10 ball like a week before the event. Yeah. That's friggin' strong. <laughs> and that was on your table, the Gabriel's that's in the basement up at Lucky's, which is a four and a half inch pocket. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, ran, <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, I just feel that I can catch a lot of gears. Yeah. Well, I As, agree with you. That's why I think you're going to win. I don't especially, think you're gonna win you know, if you look at Snooker, I mean, what's the format in Snooker if you're going to play in a world championship? First one who wins seven games, I think. It's long. So it's long. Yeah, it's is, long. Is it two days almost? No. Well, the finals were, God, what were they? Andy, did you see that? Uh, the finals are something crazy, like 13 race or... Race to 13? I thought it might be the best out of 13, best, which no, is a race it's to best seven. out of like 25. Wow. So, I mean, it takes a long time, right? It takes like four hours, maybe? I don't know. No, they play multiple sessions. Yeah. Because what they do is they'll play four games and then take a break. Ah. And then play, I think it's eight games as a session. So they play four, take a break, play four more, and then they're done for the day. Yeah. Unless you're Ronnie O'Sullivan. He ran that 147 in, what, like five minutes and 37 seconds? Mm -hmm. It's on YouTube. It's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. The guy is just, some of those guys, are, all of them are talented, you know. Uh, it just does some pretty strange things. Okay, this is a nice question. Johnny T. I know Shane can win, but ask him if he's going to win. All right. Give us your answer. Yeah. Because, there you go. Uh, that, that's a simple one. I'm having a good year, and uh, I've been playing good. And uh, well, and that's that. A lot of it's confidence. I don't. I don't understand why people think I'm going to lose, especially <laughs> when I beat him in the U.S. Open. <laughs> you beat seven Filipinos, I think, in the U.S. Open. Was, you were the last Mohican there, buddy. I, you know, I got the favor of all of them because of my break. Yeah. And. And that's short. Those were short races. I don't understand why, but I mean, the bookie. I heard the bookie in London or something. I don't know. Said that Dennis is favored by eleven games too. Oh really? Yeah. Where do we make that bet? Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, that's that's pretty strong. You know, I don't, somebody I, told me that the, they yeah. got some bets going on in yeah. in uh, Europe. Wow. Well, I don't care how much we bet. Nobody's going to match the bet that. Uh, uh, now I lost his name. The boxer. Yeah. Was uh, that real? Because I, I saw some things saying that might not be real. I don't know, but it, it was re reported that he bet. What's his 5. name? 5.9 million is what 5. they were saying. 5.9 million. million. I can't remember his name. That's Floyd that Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, right. Bet 5.9 million on the uh, basketball game the other day and gave up seven points. And they, his team won by like 20 something. It was like yeah. a uh, murder. 28 or something? Jeez. Yeah. You know. The Heat killed him. Yeah. I watched the whole game. I was going for Miami. Justin said that would be the first basketball game he's watched in 10 years, and then he forgot it was on. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I had to later, later. I would love to go to a basketball game. Really? i never been to a pro. They're fun. I used to go to Pacers games in Indiana a lot. They have that, uh, I'm not, I can't remember what you call it. It's, uh, it's an all-star game here. They have, it's not an official game. It's like, uh, I don't know, like the Olympic game warm-ups warm or something. You know, it's just a team, guys from all the different teams. They yep. have like and that they play that here, and oh, friend, yeah. yeah, it's once a year. Oh yeah, like November or December, I think. So, this is a, a good question from Oshawa '86. I want to know how Shane feels about the consistency of your game from day to day. Meaning, do you feel like he plays about the same speed from one day to the next, or do you think you play a couple good days and then one bad one? And if so. How, and if so, does the change have to do with your confidence level? Change have to do with what? Your confidence. In other words, if you have a good day and two good days and a bad day, is it because you're maybe not feeling as confident? or Do you feel you play the same every day? Um, I 
Let's see. Yeah, I think I play the same every day, but the older I get, I feel like I'm playing better. Uh, like um, right now, I feel like I'm playing better than I have before five years ago. Yeah, well, five years, I'd definitely say, but like six months ago, so, you think you're I mean, better? But well, from day to day, um, I think it's, it's the same yeah. almost every day, but when I practice, it built up my confidence that, you know, I'm playing yeah. better. Yeah. So. Well, uh, practice, I, I, everybody says practice makes perfect, and I, I disagree. Practice makes consistency. And you practice so much, you, you, you eliminate the highs and lows. You, uh, I, I feel that you increase the odds of a high, which is meaning of catching a gear, but you eliminate the dips, so your co consistency is much level. And uh, that's how I've always felt what practice does. It just it takes away the, 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 the a lot of a lot of things that bothers me is uh, every day when I play pool, or maybe if I take a time off for one week, um, and then I go past and back in practice. The only thing that bothers me is that I feel inside my body that my body changes, like my neck my neck starting to get and tighten up a little bit. Uh, my arms getting a little sore. It's just that you know it. It changes a lot in your body, and then when I when you practice for a couple of hours, it just to me is just that uh, you know I'm trying to get back. Yeah. You know, somebody else had asked a question. Says a, couple, a year ago or so when you started, like you were bulking up a little bit, like you were working out with weights, and it looks like you're you're not as much. Did you cut back on the weight training? Uh, no, I I just got back into it three weeks ago, and you know, uh. I mean. Um, I've been traveling so much that I couldn't even go back into the gym. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get back into to the gym as much as I can. Well, you go like three times a week, something like that? I go in six times a week. Six times a week, okay. And then I take Sundays off. And you didn't go to China just because you're just a little burned out on the because traveling scene? I'm burned scene, out right? and I need to get back in the gym and get yeah. ready for my next trip. Okay. I can't go to China for one trip and it just burns me up yep. too much. Well, I, I think you're being really smart to understand that the levels of pool has a lot to do with physical fitness, mental fitness too. But I mean, when Mika and Torsten and and some of those guys, I mean, they 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 kept very. I think very physical good, is the most important it, thing about pool. for this game. It is. It, it, oh yeah. To hit the levels. I mean, you got to take care you of your back. You got to make sure your back is right. You got to make sure your everything got to be right. So I mean, uh, it's important to take care of your body. Well. And physical is is important to all sports that you play. Yeah. Well, as long as you have that attitude, you'll be around for a while, which I think everybody expects you to be anyhow. You're, you've uh, proven that you're, uh, you're going to be here for a while. You play very good all the time, it seems. Um, <laughs> what type of shaft do you use? Is it a low, the low deflection shaft? Yes, yeah, low deflection. And it's, uh, um, it's Q-Tex? Okay. I've what do you think of low deflection? Overall, what do you think of low deflection shafts? Over the standard? I used to play standard shafts when I was younger, uh, back when I was 10 years old to um, 18, 19, 20. Actually, oh. until I was 25 and 26 and I got sponsored by q okay. uh, It changes a lot. And it, it took me a couple of days to get used oh, to it. Yeah, a couple <laughs> days, know? I guess. Uh, um, how old are you now, right? 29. Person? So you've been three years, you, okay. Um, um, I think it's great. I see. It, there must be something to it. An awful lot of the players use it. I've never used one of any consider. I tried a couple of games, and I mean, I can't even hit the ball on them or not. It's just, it's all weird. But, you know, but uh, a lot, the average players use them, I mean, most of the pros. So it's. Uh, I think it's better because my aiming system is a lot different than what I have the old aiming system with the original shot. Wow. So it, it's easier for me to use my aiming system now. Than before. Yeah. And just a little plug, uh, Shane was kind enough to come in here a couple months ago and they uh, did uh, some filming and they've had, uh, uh, they've got the break uh, DVD is out. Actually, it's not a DVD. You, you download, you buy a download off, and off of Vimeo and it, Justin can explain this a whole lot better than I can, but you can download it, you can put it on your MP3s or whatever, you can put it on anything and make, put it, make your own DVD or whatever. But anyhow, there's one on breaking and there's uh, one on uh, Aiming system. Aiming system, right. And there's uh, one or two more. But Justin will pump you up on that. Talk yeah, to him about uh, that, Justin. 
the links are on the tar homepage. Okay. And it's we have right now up we have a breaking uh, segment as well as an aiming segment. Um, the aiming's like 33 minutes long. The breaking's a little longer. Um, we got some more coming out, which and then ideally the plan is when the whole project is finished, then at that point we will make a DVD. The goal is to have DVDs ready for the nationals in July. Uh, so if that happens, that's our goal. Yeah. Um, but so we'll see. But anyway, the other two are finished. They're great quality. Um, you can go to our website. The links are right there. And the way it works is you can download, you buy it, and then you can stream it for up to a year on any device, iPad, iPhone, whatever. Um, and you also, if you want, you can download the source file to keep it forever. So it's a pretty good deal. It is a pretty good deal. And we also have TAR 34, the entire match, is, uh, is available, which is uh, was a great, amazing one-pocket set. Any yeah. of you one-pocket guys out there need to check that out. And the, uh, the TAR matches we're putting up for 5 bucks a day. So you can buy the whole match for 15 bucks, or if, say, you just want the one pocket, you get it for $5. No, it, it, the, the reception's been pretty good. It took Justin a long time to figure out how to yeah, come it was, up with a... Well, I mean, it was always a question of what made sense, and finally Vimeo started that program, yeah. and it works great. Uh, there was one first... We came across the first glitch um, actually this week, and it was a problem with, I want to say the aiming video. They had a some kind of internal server link. we got to fix Shane's mic there. Um, but... They fixed it within 24 hours. They're extremely responsive to customer service. That's good. So I've been great. very happy with them, and the quality is excellent. That's good. Um, another question uh, from Hang the Nine: Who is the dad of the Alex we said to hi to earlier, the 13-year-old that just won the main, or excuse me, Massachusetts uh, juniors? How often did you play when you were younger, like preteen? How many hours did you play? I mean, I know you started playing in the leagues back when you were like six, seven years old, and your whole family had a history of playing pool. You know. I probably play uh, two times a week, two or three times a week, um, just because uh, on the weekends I go to pool hall with my friends, and um, and then maybe once a week I play pool league. Yeah. Uh, I started playing pool league when I was about eight years old. Okay. But when you were like 13, 14, 15, did you really get into it? Did you start playing six, eight, ten hours a day? or um, like I started to get into it when I was... When I had my truck, I had my truck at 15 years old, and then I would go up to, I would travel 50 miles to play a tournament every week uh, in Spearfish, South Dakota, from Rapid City, South Dakota. And I would go up there every week to play that tournament, and I won that week, I won the tournament 17 weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't get smart enough to throw you out? No. <laughs> no it's so at that 17. time, I started playing a lot of pool. <laughs> So. When I have my first car. So. Yeah. So. Okay, that's cool. Because you have a great work ethic. Everybody talks about that all the time. And that's it's mandatory to play your level. Yeah. You know, t you know it's, uh, talent can only get you so far. You have to do it over and over again. Um, let's see here. Would you allow a movie to be made about your life? Who would you want to play yourself in that movie? And uh, have you ever considered opening up a structured pool school? Now, those are two different questions. This is from Fathom Blues. The uh, name is Justin. He's out of Salem, Arkansas. So you ever would you, you'd probably love to have a movie, you know. You know Stevie Wonder could play you. No, mm. I just. <laughs> uh, what was the question about the movie? Yeah, would you would you would you allow a movie to be made about your life? And if uh, yeah. so. Who, who do you think should play you in the movie? <laughs> Justin Timberlake. You know, he'd probably be pretty good. That guy can do a lot, you know. He's, you know. I would probably pick uh, somebody young. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would start when you're a kid and then it'd end when you're old. You know, it's, it'd be, a, you know. <laughs> That's an interesting question. It is. And, you know, it could happen because the guy is, you really promoted pool and you're just like a, you've done well, so Just the story. Yeah, I mean, the story's, story's great. He's got a great story. I, I kind of like uh, Tom Cruise. What? He's too old, man. He's, He's too, too short, man. <laughs> Plus, he's no. like a four foot nine. Come on. 
It's got to be one of these these guys like uh, what's that Adam Levine oh, guy or what something? What about the dude? Andy will know this. Uh, who's a dude in Drive? Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Yeah, well, that's another one to be good. Yeah. Kind of looks like him a little bit. How about White what's, boy? What's the McC McConaughey? Kind McCon of a pretty kid. What, what's the <laughs> what's Mc, what's his name? McConaughey. Mc All these guys are too old, man. What? Yeah, he probably is. He's probably thirty now. Yeah. No, I he's guess. over forty. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Hey, here's a good question from Shannon Spronk, and this is this is this would be a good topic for us, anyhow. For those that you don't know it, Corey Duell won the U.S. Snooker Championship. What do you think about that? I didn't even hear anything about that tournament. So, I mean, uh, what was that tournament held? In uh, Houston or Dallas, Texas, in a in a, a place that has like four, five, six, six by twelves. They, you know, I mean, I know the American talent in snooker is not the strongest in the field, but there's a couple guys that could play. But he he worked them over pretty good. Well, I I went on the road with Corey a couple times, and I mean, and uh, a lot of times he would go to a snooker table and practice. All right, now you got to tell us some road stories. Tell us a road story of you and Corey when you're out on the road. <laughs> uh, what did he say? Yeah. Oh, he wants to hear some road stories with you and just Alex one. on the road. Just, just one. one. No, it's, uh, it was Corey. And Alex on the road? No, Corey. Oh, you and Corey. What did I say? Oh, me and Corey. What did I say? I thought I Alex. Said. Oh, yeah. No, I was thinking because we have the one about Alex and Corey or something about backing up into the car, but <laughs> that was a funny story, losing the bankroll in 12 seconds flat. But yeah, you you got to be on the road a couple times and have some good stories with me and Corey. Yeah, or even with anybody. But it'd be nice if it was with Corey. But because another question is, as you mentioned, that going on the road is too dangerous, and that could kind of lead into they could be a you know. I actually never went on the road with uh, most of the pool players. I mean, uh, other than going to the Philippines together or Asia, you know. Yeah. So I mean. Uh, I mean, I know one story. I got hit by a cue ball. Somebody threw the cue ball at me. <laughs> when I was younger. Before or after you took their money? Uh, that was before. That was probably in 2003 or 2002. Was that in Reno? And um, Where ever, was it? Ever since I got hit by a cue ball, I was like, I told my uncle that I don't want to go on the road anymore. Yeah. Where, where, where did that happen? Uh, Tennessee. Okay. Tennessee. That's, that's where they had the guy that ran into the wall at 100 miles an hour with his head. Yeah. You know. Oh well. I'm not saying they're crazy over there, but. Uh. But um, that's where I experienced that I just didn't want to be on the road anymore. Yeah. It's just too dangerous, and you know something's gonna happen some days if you. You. Know. You do hear of those stories. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean like a uh, lot. Yeah, a lot. Not as much yeah. as you used to. I mean, I, uh, everybody. You know, I mean, there's not as much and, money on the road as there used to be. There's no, no, but there's, there's a, not there's many a guys do it anymore. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, he probably wasn't on the road as much as say the guys 20 years ago because the internet. Yeah. And you're, it's you know the internet and cell phones. They have completely. There is no undercover. Yeah. It's, no, there, you it, can't sneak up on anybody. It's just all changed dr drastically. But yeah. <laughs> Here's an interesting question from Fanic, Fanatic, whatever. What's the most weight you have given playing a local player and still come out on top? I saw you give, uh, I saw you give some weight up at Big Dogs when you were playing Scott Frost that time, and it was ridiculous, like the break and the four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> playing ten ball or something. I don't know. It was, it was off the charts. And the guy played pretty good too. No, you didn't give up the break. You kept the break. That's what it was. I yeah. see. Uh, for for a lot of money, I gave uh, I gave Scooter the um, the four out and all the breaks on a nine foot table. Yeah, playing, playing, playing nine ball. The four out and all the breaks. So you're betting he doesn't either make a ball right, or he doesn't it, get it, to um, the one, two, three down. He gets a four out and then I get the seven, eight. Uh, he get the he get the seven, eight on the break, and then four out in the game. Wow. Now you played Dippy and beat him at some outrageous game, and then Bustamani tried it afterwards and he didn't get there. And you were. Yeah, and then I gave Dippy. Uh, was it? F uh, this is one pocket, wasn't it? Yeah, fourteen, three, uh, fifteen, three. 15-3, playing one pocket. Yeah. 
And there was one game, now I think actually this was a rotational game or something. Because you're playing, or somebody was playing like a race to 21, and he had you 20 to 15 or something like that, and you still won the set. Was that, wasn't that Dippy? I wasn't there. And it was either nine ball or 10 ball. I had so many masters, I can't even remember all of them. <laughs> <laughs> easy come, easy go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, Dippy, was a, he's a maniac, but he would get some crazy bets going. Oh, yeah. Humongous bets. 15 to 3? I'd play you 15 to 3. I've never seen anybody like that. So. Yeah. How do you stay in focus mentally for long hours? So that's why you like these races to 100. You can stay focused. You can see the distance line. Whereas, like we've talked about Darren. Darren is a short distance. He plays the races to 10, 12, 15. He can't see the finish line at 100, or so it appears. You can. How do you do that? Hmm. It's just what I believe. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I think I think when you play a race of hundred, a lot of time you don't have to worry about nothing. You just get up there and play pool, and play your best pool, and there's no not much pressure. So I mean, um, because I'm I know I'm gonna hit a high gear, and that's what kept me going. Yeah. So when you're sitting in the chair and your opponent's shooting and maybe shooting very well, do you, uh, you're kind of watching him, but you're really not watching him? Is he just kind of like relaxing and watching him? Or do you get, sometimes when you get... I just know that I'm going to get to the table. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get to the table soon. and just, yeah. just got to be hmm. patient. Sometimes when you're having a hard time, you, 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 you kind of put your hand, you're like, you're like meditate a little bit or just kind of regroup, maybe you've... Uh, Scratch on the brake a couple times, or yeah. you know, screwy things happen on a pool table. And they can be very frustrating. Yeah, I mean, you know. it happens a lot. I mean, I, I've already been there a lot of times, and you know, I think with that experience in the past uh, helped my game today. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, you learn as you get older, and you play a lot of pool, and you play a lot of matches. Uh, a lot of times, you're gonna feel yourself that you're gonna win. Yeah. So. I think that's why, I think that's why, you know, you don't have that much pressure. Um, you can relax more. Um, it's just that you play a lot of pool. But that that's, that's comes from that confidence factor, yeah. you know, which comes from practicing a lot, which comes from being in physical shape. I mean, there are all these things you're talking about are connected. Yeah. Um, what game did you start playing when you started as a kid? Eight ball. Eight ball. Bar table eight ball? Bar table. Okay. You at one time had a standing challenge, kind of like anybody in the world, a race to, I don't know if it was 100 or 60, but a long race of eight ball on a bar table for like 10,000 or better to anybody in the world, and nobody ever took you up on it. Is that still a standing bet? Yeah, it's okay. open. I see. Well, that might, after we get done uh, playing this Dennis and Shane on the nine-footer, on your way back from Tunica, we'll bring in a bar box and you can take another <laughs> swing at it. I would, I would love to play uh, bar table eight ball. I, mean, I would love to see a race to 100 bar table eight ball, winner breaks. And I just want to see if, what's the over and under on a, <laughs> what, 15? I don't know. Remember when he <laughs> played Frost nine ball, people were saying it was going to be 10 or 15 I, mean, I think it's a whatever. great game because it goes so quick. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's, you figure out your pattern and yeah. you shoot them in. Justin's right. Uh, you, when you played at Frost uh, up there in, in Big Dogs in uh, Iowa, Des Moines, now you beat Frost pretty 150 to 102. 102, you were just killing him, and it was the break. Of, I mean, and Scott was getting very frustrated. But what was the biggest pack there, Justin? Do you remember? I want to say seven. Seven. Well, that's nothing. You guys run more than that playing ten ball. Jeez, go practice. <laughs> <laughs> It may not have been that high. I forget. It, it was like it wasn't what anybody thought it would be. Here's one that Iba seventy four sixty seven asked, and I, w I think I know the answer. But I, I think to clarify things is, uh, did you finally get paid for the U.S. Open? Do you intend to go back? Yeah, that's a yes, yes. It's yes, two yes. questions. Because yeah, okay. A lot of people got to understand the economy is real hard right now, and you got you always got to give something a chance. I don't have a problem with it. Hey, if and you get paid, I, go back again. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, as long as you get Eventually paid. Eventually, you're going to get paid anyway, okay. so what's the problem? That's a good outlook. Um, you know, 
and, and hey, more power. And Barry, you know, Barry and I don't see eye to eye. He doesn't even want me to talk about him. But this is a good talk, so. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't blame him. It's a great event him. he does. It's I don't, I don't blame him for the late piece because yeah. he's trying. He's he been doing this for so long. Yeah. He loved pool. Yep. I mean, okay. he loved pool as much as I do. I am not going to, you know, well, step back away from him saying, you know, um, I'm not going to go to his U.S. Open. So, okay. I mean, so that's being loyal. That's good. That's a good I mean, thing. He's that trying is. to promote the game. He's yeah. trying to help the players. This is what he's been doing for 30 years. Yeah. So. Hey, Justin, uh, who is set up for the uh, commentary? I know that Robert LeBlanc is going to be here, and uh, Jeremy Jones is going to be here on Saturday. Yeah, I've got uh, tried to see. I, I contacted Oscar today to see if he could come in Friday, and he's supposed to get back to me. He doesn't know yet. Okay. They're, he's actually playing his match right now, so I don't know how long they're planning on sticking around. Yeah. Um, but if nobody, I've, like I said, got some feelers out. If yeah. nothing else, it'll be me and Robert Friday, and then uh, Robert and Jeremy Saturday, and uh, see what I can do for Sunday. Yeah. Worst case, it's, it's stuck with me and Robert. Yeah. Well, you do quite well in the booth, and uh, Robert does too. And it's interesting because, as everybody knows, there's 30 some odd players playing about a half a mile from here at the bonus ball studio. So. There ought to be somebody that wants to be a, a commentator. Jeremy does one heck of a job, though. He's, he's very, very good. Good insight. That's because he understands the game. He plays real good, former U.S. Open uh, champion. Him and Billy and Cardona are the two best, in yeah. my opinion. And, you know, I, I've always thought Billy was pretty much on a level of his own. And uh, I, I actually put, put Jeremy right there with him. I think so. And Jeremy doesn't have anywhere near the experience that Billy does. It's just... He's I don't know. Good. Jeremy's been playing pool for a lot of years. Well, no, he does. He, but uh, as been as far as commentator. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. But Jeremy's got such a good insight into the game. You know, he doesn't look. He just looks like he's just lollygagging. He just, you know, he's not flashy. He just gets the job done. So. Yeah. Um, this is one we kind of touched on. Uh, Pabagali, uh, provide specific examples of how your game has improved from a year ago, and do you focus primarily on the mental toughness? Given that you've you've now reached such a high level, so do you focus more on your mental uh, awareness and toughness, or do you focus on a lot of um, a lot of time into mental, um, just um, just going back, thinking about the good times that I played, thinking about the U.S. Open I won, thinking about the all the times that I played good, yeah. and uh, I think that's what kept me going. Uh, once you think about that, then you go to the pool table. Yeah. And this is the way you play. Well, it's interesting because when, you know, by people watching matches like you and Dennis, they get to watch such high level, they're actually training themselves because their visualization, and if you can visualize the ball go in the pocket, you have a much higher probability of making it in the pocket. So, uh, what I see a lot of times when I go to the tournaments, I'm looking at other pool players. Um, they, they're having a hard time pocketing the balls. Uh, they're afraid of the pocket, and they hung it up a lot of times. And uh, that's that's one thing I look at is, uh, you know, a lot of pool players are struggling because the mental. So what I think you know, is that, you know, I try not to worry about the pocket. I just think about the time that I play good, and this is the way I play. You know. So when you're actually down aiming or getting the pre pre shot routine, you're not actually saying, okay, I got to aim here and do this. You do that. You're just kind of putting yourself into the, trying to help your, in, your in sub, let the subconscious do it for you. Yeah. Just say, I've shot this shot a million times. All I can do is stay down, go through it, shoot the ball boom. in the hole. It's, it's simple. Just <laughs> put it in the hole. Just shoot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Cool. Well, that's that's the advantage that a really good player has over a not so good player because of. A not so good player has got all this other crap going on in his ears. Well, they got to stay down. I got to do this. I got to do that. And pretty soon, you can't focus on what you're supposed to do. They worry about the um, getting out of line. They worry about getting uh, making the shot poorly, or <laughs> or not getting in shape right, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They they always worry about that. So I mean. Um, just get down and do it, and don't worry about it. Yeah, just get down there and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say. But I understand, I think, what you're saying. Ghost Ball's asking, how did you like that speed pool? 
He watched you and DeLuna. It's on YouTube, evidently. Oh, I think that was the best tournament I ever played in. Well, you know, you've said that, and there's two or three other people said that that's just a fun tournament. Oh, that was the most exciting, the most, got a lot of drama. Um, and I watched a match. The guy was up 40 seconds in time between the two players. Now, what they do is they put two tables yeah, side by side? Yeah, they put two tables. So and one guy was down 40 seconds. Playing... What are they playing? Nine ten ball, ball, ten ball. Uh, speed pool. But you can play them in any rotation. You just have to shoot the ten ball last. Yeah. Okay. So what happened is uh, every ball you miss, it's a ten-second penalty. This guy was up 40, 40 seconds. seconds to the last game. So, I mean, you're, you're basically playing even on every game. Sure. Okay. So somehow the guy is losing 40 seconds after, I think, it was four racks. After four racks, he's down 40 seconds. So one guy, he started, the guy that was ahead winning, he started missing balls. And every ball he missed was 10 second Ten penalty. Seconds. And <laughs> he missed three in a row, or four in a row. Wow. Wow. You know? Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that was the most entertaining tournament I ever played at. So. Yeah. That's right. I haven't seen it, but I've seen, well, I think I saw a little flash on it. I'll have to look it up because. A lot of people say it's a lot of fun. Oh, I it, because and it's the way that they presented it. Now that's done by the Guinness uh, uh, Guinness World, World Speed Pool, I guess they go. But it's Guinness World Series in uh, Indonesia or yeah. uh, somewhere. Hey, Mark, why don't you have him rack up a game and play a game of that speed pool? Show us what he's talking about. Okay, yeah, just play a game of speed pool. We'll time you. <laughs> Find my oh my watches. Somebody else is gonna have to time it. Right. My, my phone's on my. Um, and while you're doing that, have you ever taken any actual lessons from somebody? And have you ever, do you use any type of instructional material? I mean, no. But, no. but you've never taken a lesson from I you? learned everything on my own. Wow. Uh, my mom let me do my own thing. Um, well, now she was a pretty sporty player, too. So was your aunt and your aunt. Well, you had a whole family. Bloomberg's from... Uh, well, the they shoulders. helped me, you know, they helped me do, um, yeah. you know, learn how to use the bridge, you know, they yeah. helped me, they tell me, they kept me motivated where, you know, go past it, so okay. go shoot some balls, go play with him, yeah. or whatever. Go play in the street, I mean, you know, go play on the pool table. <laughs> I mean, and then after a little longer period of time, I started learning from better players. Yeah. So I'd, I never really took any lessons. Okay. So. All right, so... Go ahead and play a game of speed pool, and you can explain things if you want, but it's... So what happened is, uh, it was on a map. I think it was, the balls were tapped, so a lot of times, I think uh, a couple of times they would go in the side pocket, so I just hit it like this. Okay. You just run off. <laughs> you can shoot any ball that stop. The cue ball has to stop, but the other balls don't have to. And so the trick is stop shots. Every ball you miss, it's a 10-second penalty. You're at 30 seconds, just so you know. Nice. That was a good shot. <laughs> okay, you were about 44, uh, 54 seconds. Now the average is, time uh, was about 40 seconds per play. 40 seconds? Carl Boys was beating everybody by 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, he, yeah I heard he, on a nine foot table. Yeah. 40 Anywhere seconds. Anywhere between 40 to 50 that's seconds is the average time from each player wow. in the top 32. That's pretty fast. You know, of course, you learn some tricks, and the, the, the trick is getting the cue ball to stop dead. You know, you and then every time they miss, you add another yeah. 10 second time. Yeah, well, you can't afford to miss. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, when you fly, you check your luggage, you check your cue stick. I mean, do you send it FedEx or you throw it in the plane? I put it in my luggage. Okay. I have a duffel bag. You put it in a duffel yeah. bag. Yeah. We had our hopes up that the TSA, Transportation Safety Agency, whatever they call themselves, was going to lift the ban on pool cues. 
But they, I don't know why they did this. They combined it with pool cues, sporting goods, and small knives. And everybody went ballistic. And then they pulled it off. because It was supposed to go into effect like last April. Mm -hmm. They've now said that they are not going to, it's dead. Okay. And it was the, the uh, airline unions that caused the problems more than anything because they don't want cue sticks and fishing gear and everything being carried on because they're the ones that have to make it all fit in the uh, overheads. And the knives, yeah, that was a, that was a hard sell. Even though, I, it's a hard time to believe, they say that they confiscate these little knives under three-inch blade. TSA says they confiscate 2,000 knives a day. Can you imagine that? Yeah. People forget they got them in their pocket. I've done it. <laughs> 2,000 knives a day? I mean, how many do you have? After you get caught once, you're going to go out and buy more of them? I mean, I don't know. It's a... Well, that's not 2,000 from one dude, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty crazy. That's like 600,000, 700,000 a year. You could open a knife store. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you change out your shaft, or do you have several shafts that you rotate? I've been alone? using the same one for three years. Same shaft. And most of the time you break with it, but yet you also have a brake cue. Yeah. Um, sometimes I feel like I want to use my brake cue, and sometimes I want to break with my original cue. It just depends on the table and the way the table is rolling. So. so obviously you don't sand your shaft or anything like that, or it'd no. be gone. I just, just wash it natural. Yeah. What type of tip? Uh, Kamui tips. Because I'm looking at that tip, it looks like it's it's about time to replace. It's Down pretty low now. I mean, maybe another month. Okay. But you don't grind your chalk either. All you do is just tap. It doesn't wear out from that. You know, it's. Uh, okay. Well, I think it's because it's, I got a hard tip, so I mean it lasts longer. So okay. it usually lasts probably two, about three to four months. Okay. Some guys, the one one that really sticks out to me is Rafael Martinez, and he's not happy until the tip is faded into the ferrule. Oh. I mean, it's down to nothing, and he likes it because it hits harder. But boy, can he put some crap on the ball! Oh my God, I, I can't believe the <laughs> he, shots that he does. He does, and he and, and some of us say I've seen him play seven rail safes because he plays a lot of billiards. He understand it's just when he's on, he's a lot of fun to watch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he'll be playing in our U.S. Open ten ball. I know that, and you are too. And we're you know I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Um, I, so far, we're going to have a pretty good field. Uh, we got Appleton boys, Peach, Daryl Peach, uh, Brandon Schuff, um Quite a few of them are playing. I just, we don't know. Uh, you know, with the, the conflicts of schedule with the, the bonus ball schedule. But we'll see. Um, are any uh, Filipinos signed up? Yeah, we've got a fair amount of Filipinos. And they all sign up late. But we have, uh, I, I, you know, I don't have off the top of my head. You can go to our website and see them. We, 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 it's automatic. You just go to uh, um, playbcapool.com uh, and you'll see an events thing. You, the events thing will drop down and you hit... Um, uh, 2013 pro events or something, and it goes to a page and it lists all the players signed up for the one pocket, ten ball, and eight ball. Just boom, and it uh, populates automatically. It's a real shame uh, this conflicting schedule, but you have good numbers. Or, uh, it's a little light. We think it's, I think we're ahead of last year. I expect it to be light. I don't expect it to fill up, which is unfortunate. Um, my attitude towards pro events, and actually, it's changed a lot in the last four, five, six weeks. If the pros don't want to play, that's real good. I don't have to have them either. I'm doing them for them. If they don't want it, we'll come up with something else. Maybe an invitational. Mm -hmm. Maybe a 16-man invitational, which yeah. is actually I'm leaning that way. I think it would be a lot of fun. We'd get to pick the right players. Um, when, no politics. It would be round robin, two groups of, of uh, eight or six, or depending if it's 12 or 16. Everything would be round robin. Um, the players would love it. Wouldn't we? Nobody's going to win a ten thousand dollar payday, but we'd make sure your rooms are covered, and we'd make sure we make a deal with you where you will affiliate and associate with all the amateur players. And now you get to create a fan base. That's what's one of the things that's missing. There's no relationship between the amateurs and the pros. Mm -hmm. You probably have a better relationship than anybody because you came up through the league system, and you you uh, associate with people like that. So it's cool. Yeah. I don't know. It's just. As the bingo ball, or as the pool ball turns, he used to be in the bingo business, we used to always say that, but anyhow. Um, Justin, you got anything? I'm just still looking for another store, another uh, question. No, we can actually wrap it up if you want. Um, yeah. Just tomorrow night, 
you know, uh, 5 o'clock we start. Um, we'll play the 35. Uh, people can still enter the contest if they if they don't. Um, it's on Easy Billiards. It's uh, Tar 35. Guess the score, win the cash is the name of the uh, thread. And all you do is pick your scores for each day. And every day, who, whoever picks the correct score for the end of the day, um, if there's only one guy, he wins 100 bucks. If there's multiple guys, then what we'll do is we'll take and we'll create a list, and then everybody gets a number. And then before the next day's match, we pick that number, and whoever that is gets the 100 bucks. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty. I'm I'm pumped, man. I've been wanting to see this match since 2007, uh, and to me, this is my opinion. You know, Shane says he likes. You know, he thinks Boosties. I think I think Dennis is probably. I think Shane and Dennis are the two best ten ball players. So I, I that's personally that's this is the match I wanted to see for a long time. Yeah. And when we made this match, there was some, you know, we, I, I, I said I didn't ever want to do another race to one hundred, but this one kind of makes sense. Oh so, no, I agree because of the speed. Uh, it's not going to be a this is not going to be a long long race. I mean, it's yeah. uh, and it's quality. One, it's one thing people have always said that. You know the race to 100. There's really at the end of the, at the end of it, there's really no question at that point in time who was the better player. Right. That's not to say they couldn't come back a week later and play, and it might be something different. But you know, at that point in time, there's really no excuses in a race to 100. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. That's all I got. And it's uh, five o'clock uh, Pacific, eight o'clock Eastern. Yep. That's all three days. A um, couple other little questions. Are you going to be playing in the West Coast Swing? You know, it's a they. Uh, it's a, um, uh, California be Billiard open Club. Nine weeks, yeah. For, uh, Chris, Chris has the well. He, he used to have a ten ball and a one pocket, and then Hard Times had an event, and then it show, ends up in Vegas at, at our events. Yes. And you played in them last year. Uh, uh, yeah. Sure. Bustamani made a clean sweep up in California Billiard Club. I think he won the one, one pocket and the ten ball. Yep. Which is pretty strong. So that's good that you're going to be there because that also builds your fan base, and it's a you know, it's a it's 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 good, and it's it's good that there's three of them reasonably close to each other. So. Um, and there will be a chat online. It's a, it's a, on the sidebar, as they call it, and so you go to the action report and you can catch it because somebody had a question about that. And, and it's a live chat, obviously. I don't have too many other questions. Um, I, I just think this is a great opportunity to watch two of the best players in the world. Somebody did ask, who do you think are the top five players in the world? But that, that depends on, is it, are you playing, uh, I guess they're talking 10 ball now. 10 ball's kind of replaced 9 ball as the yeah. measuring stick. And, uh, but I would say me, Dennis Okolo, uh, I'm going to go with um, Alice. Really? Okay. about Lee Van. He just won one. Um, I think he's playing in our event. And then how about, I don't know how you pronounce it. Oh, Yen P or Ko Pen Yi from yeah. Taiwan. He's, he's coming to our tournament. Yeah, he's strong. Strong he's, player. I was, the only time I was ever went to Europe for anything where, where the WPA was the year he won it over there when he was like 17. It was the, uh, <laughs> he was strong. He was strong at 17. <laughs> he's a monster. And he's got, what, two brothers? And one of them's like 13, plays pretty good too, but the other one's And like there's another uh, Taiwanese player, he's a young kid, so, yeah, they're all playing pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, it's so. hard to name who are the best, and, and actually, in all honesty, they start rattling these Chinese people name up, I have no idea who they're talking about. Yeah. I just, I, I can't, there's no identification. So. Yeah. I all mean, right. they, they can't come over here. I mean, they, they can't get visa to come over here. So. Is that what the issue is, more than anything, yeah. is a, a government sponsorship or a visa or whatever? Yeah, because I talked to um, one of the Taiwanese players. He came into the States for, for about a couple months, and I talked to his friend, and, you know, we had a chat. So, uh, so I mean, the biggest issue is that they don't have any money to get over here, um. and they can't get visa. Wow. Now, Yang... Is he from? Is he Ty, uh, Taiwan? Taiwanese. Because he was a monster. He beat Dennis two races, or like race to 60, 60. beat him like sixty to forty or something. Now he came over and played in our event last year, the year before, and he didn't play worth a flip. Mm -hmm. 
He just wasn't there. But maybe he wasn't playing. I, I heard mean, he hadn't been playing. That's I heard what that I heard like also. He just hadn't. Back. I mean, yeah. well, you got to think about it. I mean, you think about us. It's too expensive to go over there. If you're over there, if you're Taiwanese players, they're thinking the same thing what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sure. too expensive to come over here because they they don't speak English. It's hard for them to get around. It's you know, and it's hard for me to get around over there too. Yeah. You know, I will bet you that you have more opportunities to make money playing pool in the U.S. than they do. Yeah, because if they, they have a term here, over there, the there it's it's more for pride than for money, I think, mm -hmm. and things like that. So it's. Well, i tell you the one I'd like to see, and he opened the eyes up in uh, China when he came back, was Wu. Whatever. And he, he hadn't played in oh, close to two years. They make him go to, through a qualifier, which was a screw-up. And he does that. He comes in second or third, was it? Yeah. Jeez. And, you know. And yeah, he's been qualifying for the last two or three years. Yeah. In every tournament. Yeah. But. Well, he's got, he's, is he back in China? Because he was from Taiwan. He had to go back and serve his two years. Something now to do with the um, military. Yes. Yeah. Mandatory Let's get Shane's predictions by the day. Yeah. Just like for the uh, contest. Who do you like the first day? I don't know. I've been you know, working can, on my This is your opportunity to, to win $100 now. You know that, right? No. <laughs> the, first day, the first day score? Yeah. yeah first 35 score. to what? First to 35? Yep. yep. I'm going to say 35, 32, uh, 35, 31, me. That's what I picked. Is it? I think so. <laughs> Come on, keep going, buddy. <laughs> What's the second day? Second day would be uh, 70 to 70 to 59. 59? You're going to put that package You're on gonna him? You're going to whip up on him, aren't you? And if I'm playing good on the last day, I'll, I'll beat him by 100 to... 100 to uh, 87. Wow. Did you write those down, Justin? I didn't. That, you're the one with an iPad in front of you. Well, I, <laughs> I don't know how to use this thing. First day was... 35-31. 31 th Second day was 70 to 59. Third day was 100 to 89. Which means you're going to break... 87. 87. 87, right, right, right. Yeah, write them down, please. 100 to 87. I mean, I just, I'm just going back and looking at my experience from back. When I played Mika and um, Earl and Corey, I know I know um, Dennis played better than Mika, so I beat Mika 182. So yeah. I'm thinking. What was day one? 35 to what? 31. 35, 31, first day. And then 70 to Ooh. 59. That's getting excited there. Yeah. And then 100 to 87. See, now, just so you know, I picked, uh, I, I think, I think I picked 35-31, uh, you. Second day, 70-68, to 68, you. And the third day, 196, you. Somebody has 198, but most of the rest of them, are there, they're, they're picking 10, 15, 20-game blowouts. Well, I think 15 games is, if you look throughout the history of it, 15, you know, 185, it's a decent over-under for a total. Really? Yeah. Well, I know that's about what Oscar and Mora was. Uh, I, I mean, I'm yeah, a, I mean that's pick, gambling. Uh, I mean, over. actually, I, you might be you know, maybe a couple games, 187. That's where I, you if know? you were to make me pick an over-under, I'm going to pick, like, pushing 190, 188, high, 188 yeah, 189. Yeah, it's got to be around 190. Yeah. You know, just I don't know. There ain't been that many within 10 games, though. Yeah, but, there, but you, you're talking two monsters here. No, I'm talking about historically, though. If yeah. you look at all the races to 100, I mean. What has been the closest one? What was what Shane was, and Alex. I mean, if you think about it, I played Dennis the last time. What happened on the last day on Tembo? Um, he beat me by two games. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I don't remember. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I beat him the first, uh, second day in one pocket. Shane, what, what yeah. was the score? Oh, he beat me. What was the score of the... Uh, the Alex match in Vegas where he caught you. 194? 194. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the highest total, That's the isn't closest. It? That's the highest ever. How about Appleton and Hatch? What was that score? It wasn't close. Oh, really? I thought it was, and Appleton just didn't finish at the end. No. I thought it was. I want to say it was 100. I don't know if Appleton got to 90. I thought he did. Maybe he did. I thought he got to low 90s. 92, maybe? I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. 92 sounds right for yeah. some reason. So. 
Anyway, all right, so great. We got predictions. Uh, wrap it up. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, we want to thank Shane for being here. Uh, Dennis, uh, is he's not going to be jet-lagged. He's in L.A. He just doesn't arrive here till Tuesday. Uh, till t- Tuesday? Till Tuesday? Yeah, till t- 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 tomorrow morning, early, like 9.30 or 10. So Nine we have plenty of time to tomorrow. acclimate. I think this is a great opportunity to watch some of the best pool that is available in the world. And it starts at 5 o'clock East, excuse me, 5 o'clock Pacific, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, and that's tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. Um, that's TAR 35, and it doesn't get any better than this. And like Shane said, they're using it to warm up for the uh, Tunica Ultimate 10 Ball. Uh, for what it's worth, Sunday at 5 o'clock Central Time, which is 3 o'clock our time, I'm actually going to be on the Daryl Smith Pool Time Talk Show. It's kind of a neat little thing he does, and uh, uh, the links you can find on Easy Billiards, it's uh, D. Smith Pool Time or something. Just do a search, you'll find it. Um, So I'll be talking about, and they'll be talking about the tar and uh, predictions and this and that, and that's on Sunday, so it'll be an hour before the finals. But we appreciate you coming by. Uh, Good luck to you, and good luck to your partner, and that's it, I think. So uh, We'll see you later, guys. Hope you join us tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Thank you. See ya. Favor. You think?